mean, you're independent too. Tell me about just like that whole journey. I'm sure it's yeah. been. It's the best. I love it. You know, I started off my career entirely independent. Then I partnered with Columbia in 2016, this summertime of 2016, um, and went back fully independent uh, 2020, you know. So I love it. I'm comfortable being independent. I know how to, you know, navigate and manage my career. I'm I'm more suited to be independent. Right. It's just that you know what I mean like the way I move the way I like to do things the way I think um the way I like to have control over every aspect of my career uh it just makes sense to me you know I went and hired my own radio people hired my own PR agency already had the visual component locked in the graphic design component locked in um you know and then the music I didn't need a label for that either so it just kind of makes sense, you know? I just encourage every artist to, to be independent and see how much money is really in selling music. Like, that's the number one. Because the narrative that you have to run around and do all these things outside of the music to actually get money is bullshit. And it's super outdated. The number one lucrative thing to do in the music industry is to own music and sell. That's it. Like labels are billionaires off of that they don't tour they don't sell merch they don't have even the publishing you feel me they just own the masters and sell it and they get billions of dollars and so i encourage all of you go all your major label artists ask your label how much money you're grossing uh a year off of streaming and then when they tell you whatever the fuck they tell you don't believe them and hire an auditor you have the right to audit your label and that's what y'all should be doing because the reality is there's a ton of fucking money in this streaming shit. There's a ton of money in owning music and selling it. And, you know, I, I don't... I, if y'all really knew how much... And the other thing is I encourage y'all major label artists to go ask your label specifically to send you the amount of money you've grossed foreign off of streams and what you've netted. Because y'all's deals are domestic deals. Meaning when you sign to RCA or Atlantic, those are domestic deals. Overseas, there is no uh, fucking Atlantic. It's, it's, or Columbia, it's, they just have parent companies. It's just Sony or Universal, uh, so on and so forth. With little different divisions. You can't go do a deal with each fucking territory. You feel me? So you're getting absolute bullshit rates for overseas streaming income. Terrible rate. Now, if you're independent, you just get all that money. You feel me? You get all that money. And hip hop and music in general is global now more than ever. This shouldn't have been free. Um, but yeah, understanding that owning our music is like the foundation to our music career. You know, these labels are making so much money off artists because they're willingly but unknowingly going into these contracts that are just so horribly structured. You know, these 360 deals. You know, like, come on, they're getting money on all ends now. Literally, from tour money to merch money. Now to royalties and publishing. And like they said, I know that they, um, Spotify, I know, um, produces at least four different or three different checks whatever whichever one it is um different checks every stream or uh, three different royalties sorry not checks royalties so just imagine if you're like if you have a buzzing song and you don't own any of your publishing and you're getting a small percentage of your royalties like that's forever like that song could be on a streaming platform forever and like we all know how you know digital streaming has revolutionized the music industry you can literally have an independent career from your house just off streams but if you don't own your music you don't see a penny of that what? and i feel like this video is so gold because russ really emphasized that and emphasized the fact that you have to own your music as an artist you have to understand publishing you know what i mean you have to understand sync licensing you have to understand everything owning your masters is key and i feel like a lot of artists jump you know jump ship too quick and I get it, I get it. You know, money's on the table. You know, you've never seen money like this before. They're telling you this and that. You're going to be here, you're going to be there. It sounds amazing 
then and there. But when you look back, or when you step back and really look at the contract and really look at what they're saying in detail, you'll see it's all just bullshit. Literally. It's all just bullshit, and it's all just going to promote your music, right, for a few months, maybe a couple of years, in exchange for ownership of everything. So while you get something that's temporary, they're getting something that's everlasting, literally. There was an interview, um, I forgot who it was, I forgot where he worked, but um, he was saying where the back catalog, the record label, generates billions every year. What? Or hundreds of millions. And that's insane. The back catalog, back catalog, it's just masters. It just means you're masters. It's what they have, they're saying of masters. So that means all these artists gave up their rights to their music in exchange for promotion, in exchange for the high life, for the glory. And don't get me wrong, don't say, I'm not saying the artists aren't rich. I'm not saying that. But the ones that were rich and then go broke, you kind of see, once you have an understanding of the business, you kind of see why. Like, damn, wasn't that song like, yo, you were, you were, you know, top 100 for weeks and weeks. That album was crazy. You did crazy numbers. What happened? But then on the music, the contract was poorly structured. So all that money that was coming in, it wasn't going to the artist. It was going to the label and everyone in-house. And, you know, it's kind of crazy, like uh, Russ mentioned before, you know, everything they're doing, you could have done on your own. All the PR, all the marketing, the radio team, you could have done all that by yourself as an independent artist. If you really wanted it, you have to put in the work, though. And, you know, you know, success has a, it's a, a funny way of weaving out the ones that want it and the ones that don't want it. So if you really want it, you're going to get it. And that's just what it is. Um... But yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you guys can smash that like button and then hit that subscribe button, I'm going to be coming out with a lot, a lot of useful content. Um, and if you could hit the bell notification, you'll get notified every week when I drop something new. Um, sometimes during the week, you know, if I have something I want to, you know, spill, I might drop something during the week. But um, yeah, this is my first YouTube upload. I'm super, super excited. I hope you guys are too as well. Um, and yeah. That's all for today. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video, but I'm Audi 5000. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.